Hey guys, Stella here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, where today we're looking at war games between the United States and the British Empire in 1908. The range is 12,000 meters, and as you can see, there is not an entire, well, equilibrium between the two war fleets. The Americans have two battleships, where the British have three, but the Americans have one battlecruiser more than the Brits. The Americans have seven heavy cruisers versus six heavies on the British side. But the British make up with that for having eight light cruisers for the versus the American four. The Americans have slightly more destroyers than the British. So it's going to be a bit of a mismatch in the sense of they don't exactly have the same type or the same class of ships. At least not the same number of them. And that should make it interesting. I'm going to be developing the battle cruiser, letting the AI generate that thing. And, well, beyond that, I'll take control of the fleet and see how well I can do against a randomly generated fleet of uh, British ships. Uh, too many ships will affect performance significantly. We shall continue. Let's see how well the engine, and uh, well, my engine, I suppose, how well my PC can handle this. Alright, auto design. We have turrets, 13 inch, Mark III which makes them, well, already quite a bit more accurate than the ones that we've seen previous. I don't quite like that four weight offset of 15%, but okay. We'll just have to make do. It is going to make those things uh, a little bit less effective. Because that 15% four weight offset gives me a... Uh, where's the debuff? The game has stats on everything, so the debuff should tell me how much I'm paying for that. Well, maybe it's going to tell me in-game. Alright, medium speed, sorry, medium range, 25 knots. This is unusual. Usually the AI creates these massively overspeed, overspeeded battlecruisers, but this time around they went for something that's actually quite slow. Although maybe in 19, um, 1910, 1912 it wasn't that fast, or 1908, I already forgot the date. Harvey Steel, Barbette 2. A bit of torpedo protection, uh, an underwater protected deck, light shells, curious, cordite shell uh, propellant, quite a bit of HE fire chance, but also more ammo detonation chance. Does this ship carry torpedoes? No, it does not. So I'm not sure exactly why the AI set this as 18 inch, but okay. Beyond that, and this is quite surprising. We already have electro-hydraulic turrets. This early on. Okay. And enhanced reloading. For ultra-reloading you need fully automatic gun reload tech. But apparently for the turrets that's not really a concern. Really advanced stuff. Alright, so let's see if I can uh, make this fleet work. I wonder what sort of squadrons we're going to be looking at, because the AI is generally a bit wacky about throwing its own groups together. And unfortunately, as far as I know, you cannot mix and match groups in the current state of the game. So I cannot have a destroyer join a group of a light cruiser. Uh, DD join... Oh, actually, you can! My mistake, you can! That is very interesting. Alright, I want you to rejoin your previous destroyer group. Uh, we have the battle cruisers, we have the four heavies which are a bit far behind. Then you got the lights, all far behind as well, firing 7 inch guns. Uh, the heavies are firing 11 inch. The battleships, the battleships have really small guns. 9 inch. The battle cruisers have guns which are far, far larger. I'm also quite worried about the survivability of these ships, because they all have minimum bulkheads. The battleships, the battle cruisers, these guys have maximum, the heavies. The other group of heavies also have max. Even the light cruisers have maximum bulkheads. Right. Alright, lots and lots of firepower is being projected, but interestingly, the British are not firing back. Yet. That could change at any moment. Oh god, what did you give me? We got torpedoes at 3 kilometer range. That is dreadful right there. Uh, fleet, maintain course. 
Don't do anything stupid. Heavy group. And uh, the light. God, the light group's already cutting through the whole division. Alright, I hope I can still turn that ship around. Um, despite all of our efforts, all of the shells that are coming out of this group, we really haven't done that much damage. We have... <laughs> correction, we've done zero damage. Alright, there's probably a uh, light, light or a heavy. Some casemate guns, some fairly big turrets. Could be 10 inch or greater. Ah, something has finally spotted a ship. And we have our first bit of damage over here. On what I think is a heavy cruiser. Now what I'm going to do is keep my destroyers in reserve. At least for a while. To make sure that they can later on dash in. When there is not that much of a threat. And by saving them for later I hope to be able to finish off already wounded and or slowed down ships. And also wait for their numbers to diminish quite a bit. Because I think that early on, if I send in the DDs, they'll just die needlessly. This is almost... Almost a neat formation. <laughs> Up to the point where the heavy cruisers just decided to go uh, and cut through the line. Not to talk about the lights, because the lights are completely messing everything up. Jeez, you guys don't have a lot of rounds, do you? Okay, that could be a problem. Hold on, how many guns do you have? What? Does this go for everything? Look at that. 7 inch guns. 111 ammo per gun, that's all. I think the AI went with reduced amount of uh, shells. That's the only thing that makes sense here. At least for the battleships, they seem to really go all out. And they went with as many shells as they could possibly muster. This ship is really going to need some assistance in defeating enemy destroyers. 5-inch secondaries. And a couple of 3-inch case... Well, let's say a lot of 3-inch casemates. But beyond that, not a whole lot. There we go. The British fleet is firing, finally firing back and doing actually... Pretty good damage against the New Hampshire. Have we inflicted any more damage on the ships? I did get a good pen. But on what? Oh, here. We got a battleship question mark that's limping away. Listing to starboard quite a bit. But that is actually really quite interesting, because it means that that ship is so poorly protected below the waterline that it is just... It's very easy to pen it. I might capitalize on that. Alright. Um, I want the heavy group to also focus fire on this ship. The second heavy group and the lights. DDs to maintain formation with the group. You're not supposed to go off and do your own thing just yet. New Hampshire seems to be taking a bit of fire, but overall she's not burning, she's not flooding. That was a good hit though. 13 inch gun. Extended hit on the bow deck plating for 177 damage. All right. Fire set on whatever this is. I think it's a light cruiser. The game seems to think it's a light cruiser as well. 76% through identification, so we should know soon. And, oh, whoa, what did you do here? Is that the same ship? No, it's not the same ship. Interesting. Those guys take a load of damage. I haven't been hitting them. How are these flooding? Are they running into friendly torpedoes or something? Because judging by the amount of hits that I scored, it is not possible that I'm already putting these guys so far down into the water. I think they're getting hit by friendly torpedoes. 
which is really weird because the AI is usually quite good with torpedoes, and especially in this early day and age. I don't think they're in range, so the AI likely wouldn't even be trying to fire them. So I don't exactly know what's going on here. All right, I want to start heading in a slight turn. Um, if I just put these guys all to follow the battleships, let the battleships lead the division, would that work? So you guys would be screening, yes. Uh, the group from the Pablo would be screening. The Duluth group. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, that's the damn cuff still here. Uh, the Luth group would be screening, and the group from the Boston. The battleships might be slightly too fast. Let's slow down to 20 knots. That should allow all the other ships to catch up. Ah, the Niobe is what we're fighting. 11 inch heavy cruiser. And yes, she too is flooding. Few bulkheads. Do they all have that problem? Do they all have few bulk? How is this thing still flooding? What are you doing with the battle or with the damage control team? No, actually, sorry, my bad. It was not a torpedo. A couple of minutes ago, a battle cruiser of mine hit this battleship, did 82 damage right through the bow belt armor, and apparently that was below the waterline and put the ship down into the water. She started flooding. Oh crap, speaking of flooding, I think we're going to be down one ranger very, very soon. Oh, what are you doing? They're all set to screen. So, if you could just maintain your position and not <clears throat> go haywire and start all trying to collide with each other, that'd be lovely. There goes the Niobe, first blood. Got to the British, but we're not far behind in taking out one of their ships. Although it's not the same class of ship. Here come the destroyers. Alright, in that case, let's just once again take manual control. Because I don't believe in the AI's ability to maintain formations. New Hampshire is doing all sorts of <clears throat> weird stuff. Look at this, they're actually colliding with each other. When I say I want you to screen for the battleships, I don't mean this close. You're slightly overdoing it now. Oh, New Hampshire, what are you doing? Let's see, if we can put down a destroyer, and maybe this heavy cruiser, sorry, this light cruiser. The enemy formation might be a little bit more susceptible to torpedo attacks. Good hit! Engine damaged, half the ship gone. Yes, there's another one, 134 flooding, and she's dead. I don't believe that was a heavy cruiser, actually. That looks a hell of a lot like a destroyer, and something else just got sunk. Another destroyer! That wasn't even the light cruiser, the Eclipse. Holy crap, the British are really taking a pounding today. Six inch guns, minimum bulkheads, about one inch of armor. But if these guys all charge in one by one, then what did they expect would happen? Holy, look at that. There's another 1600 damage hit from a heavy cruiser. What the hell? Judging by how hard my ships hit and how little they do, I'm actually surprised. There goes another one. Who is firing so incredibly accurate? None of them. This is six... 3%, 4%, 1%. Let's get this uh, second destroyer group 
We're heading towards the bigger ships. There goes the Pandora. She is flooding. She only needs a couple more hits and she'll sink. Now, so far, I am not really taking that much damage. Which is curious, because we have the same tech. And they actually have more battleships than I do. Speaking of the battleships, let's start heading north. The Pandora is trying to fall back. That is going to get denied very, very quick. Oh, crap. The Duluth and its escorting group. They have broken up. Alright, fine. Uh, I want this... Jesus, what a mess. Alright, I want you to disengage from your current division. Uh, I want you to create your own. So that would be group 8. I want you to be group 8. Group 8, off you go. Savannah, detach. St. Paul, detach. California, detach. I want you to join in with uh, that formation there. And then we have another three ships. Colorado is going to be the lead. I want the Chester to join the Colorado. There. Now I have three smaller formations. Hopefully I can make these work a little better. Because right now this is turning into one big tangle of ships that I just cannot make sense of. The Duluth is currently flying, or well, sailing solo. Let's try and join her up with the group from the Boston. Oh, sorry, the Macon? Is that the group leader? Yes, Macon. The Witchet is dead. See, I'm not really controlling all the ships and setting up all the different systems, uh, dictating ammo type, dictating when to fire, when to use secondaries, when to use torpedoes. I'm just mostly letting the battle unfold. But damn, the British are really doing poorly. Set speed 20 knots, California group. Oh, there goes the Hampshire. Twenty knots. Alright, the DDs are now getting in a position from where they might be able to start doing serious damage against the bigger ships. The Colossus. So let's get you guys involved. Woodbury, Shoop and Gravely. And see if we cannot just charge down this supposed battle cruiser here, the Colossus. Oh crap. The Woodbury just took a real bad hit. She's down. The whole bow is on fire. Most of the bow compartments are flooding. Yeah, she won't be around for much longer. Light cruiser, set up a smoke screen. If only to protect yourself. Uh, the Pueblo, are you solo? Yes. Alright, in that case, join up with the New Orleans. Since you're very close to that. <coughs> Battleships. We need to continue to hit these ships. And try to sink the weak ones. Where are my other destroyers at? Here. Oh, crap. They're really far out of position. I didn't manage those correctly. Shells flying out from the battleships going for the Colossus now. The DDs are still juggling for position, trying to get the Woodbury to fall behind, and it's not quite successful because she's dead. Hermione's taking a beating. Flooding really is a big threat for these ships. Curious. What warship is this? Is that a heavy? No, it's a light. It's a light cruiser. This 
is something that I want to sink. The Queen. 13 inch guns and a lot. Holy shit, how many do you have? 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 16 guns? Jeez, you're a big girl. Uh, that kind of puts my battleships to shame. My 9 inch guns. On the Maryland and the Pennsylvania. Right. That's nowhere near enough. Uh, all their heavies are... Stopped? Well, near enough. They're not going anywhere in a hurry anyway. Duluth is going down very soon. California might not survive much longer either. I don't really know how we're going to sink the Queen and the Barham. They're pretty well protected with up to 11.2 inches of armor. And they have those really high amount of guns, which means they can chew through battleships, or sorry, chew through heavy cruisers pretty damn quick. My best bet would be destroyers, but they're too far out of position thanks to my mismanagement. Hopefully I can still get the Shoop to launch its torpedoes and kill off the Colossus. That would be another couple of big guns out of commission. 13 inch. And meanwhile, the Pennsylvania and the Maryland are still closing the distance. There goes the New Orleans. That's a heavy cruiser. Oh, sorry, no, it's a battle cruiser, in fact. Uh, join the battleship group. The Colossus seems to be mostly withstanding all the fire. Oh, crap. Shoop is flooding. The Shoop still needs 200 meters more to get into range, but judging by the amount of damage that she's taken, I don't think that she'll even get into range before she dies. Uh-oh. California group, go for the Nyad. Macon group, go for the Nyad. Colorado group, head north. Sorry, head northeast. Oh, torpedoes are a thing. So your torpedoes are better than... 6.2! Right. So I guess the game gave me the fast torpedoes. There goes the Shoop. That's the DD. Leaving just the Gravely. Which, judging by the amount of shells coming in and the amount of ships that I'm going in into words... It's not going to be with us for much longer. Uh, very much like the Colorado. Sorry, the California. Yeah, I'm selling broadside onto enemy uh, big guns. I am just asking for this. Fall back. Let's see if the battleships can inflict some more damage. I'm not really penning these things, apparently. The Colossus. There goes the Nyad. Sunk down to heavy flooding. Good. Hermione has taken some damage. There are just a lot of these heavies lurking in the back. This once again goes to show that the AI still needs a bit of work. There goes the Gravely. That's the last destroyer that I had on the left. The AI is just stopped with these ships. It's almost like they're using them as stationary gun emplacements. There we go. Now we're inflicting some damage on the Colossus. Even if it's only fire damage. With minimum bulkheads, that fire can take hold of the ship and sink it. California is still alive. Against the odds. I want you to go for the the Thames and same for the Macon. Oof. 109 damage. But this guy took 845. The ship's almost entirely ablaze and flooding. There she goes. That leaves the light cruisers Furious and Hermione.
Let's focus fire. Because these guys are armed with torpedoes and can really mess up my formations with those. So far I'm surprised. Oh. I was going to say, so far I'm surprised the Colossus is not taking more damage than it is. But I guess that those fires did work out quite well. The ship was entirely engulfed in flame and that killed, well, I guess the crew and then the ship. Alright, analysis. What do I need to sink most? Ideally, I'd say the Queen and the Barham. And the Bulwark. But there's going to take a lot of time to sink. Uh, maybe go for a couple of the heavies. See if I can hit the Devonshire. Although, the, no, actually the Glorious is broadside to me. Making it quite vulnerable indeed. California still flo floating? Still fighting? That's impressive. Although that's about to change. Oh, good hits, guys. Good hits. There goes the Furious. Next, Light Cruiser Hermione. The Glorious is now taking quite a amount of fire from the battleships. Doing, doing okay amounts of damage, but we're going to need a lot more before she goes down. Maybe once again go for the HE shells. Just put it on fire because that seemed to work very well against its sister ship. Uh, the Morrison group. If I can charge in with the Morrison, I can land some torpedoes on the Queen. And with that, potentially at least slow it down, cause battle damage, and thus make it less accurate. Hermione is now gone. That leaves just a couple of big battleships and various other larger warships. So all their destroyers and light cruisers are dead. Oh, crap. Come on, get into range, please, quick. Because at least now there's still a torpedo platform left. We are in range. Torpedoes are oriented. There we go. Torpedoes away. Excellent work. Now I need you to get your accompanying members into range. Your Hyman and Cunningham, I guess. Oh, ammo detonation. I hope that the Queen is going to maintain course and speed so that these torpedoes over here can do a good blow of damage. And in the meanwhile... Yeah, the Glorious is burning up a little bit, but not nearly as much as I would like. These guys are armed with torpedoes, so if I get into 6.1 kilometer range with the battleships, I could start to regret that. And I already am in range of the battleships. That's problematic. Uh, pen chance on the Queen is bad. Let's go for the Devonshire then. Come on, torpedoes. These do look good. The Queen is turning to starboard. And by doing so, opening herself up to a, uh, well, well, a very good reception of those torpedoes. We're going to have two landing amidships. Shit, those St. Paul. This one might miss. Hit. Hit. Yes. Hit. Very good. Three spots of flooding. Lots of fires. The queen has been severely damaged. And I think that the Morrison... 
Actually, I'm surprised that the Morrison is still here. The Hyman has also just sent out another torpedo salvo against the already wounded Queen. I'm not sure if there's going to be a Queen left by the time that those torpedoes arrive. I want you guys to hold off on the torpedo launches for the moment. Because she might just flood. That would be a very good win. Because then I don't have to worry as much about that big battleship. Yep. There she goes. The queen has sunk down to, or due to heavy flooding. In the meanwhile, I've lost the St. Paul. So my DDs are really the best weapon that I have against these guys. I want you to go for the bar I'm next. And meanwhile, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and lagging further behind the Pablo. They're trying to get into range to start doing more damage against the heavies. But so far, I'm not really too impressed with their performance. Shit, there goes the Morrison. That's one of my last surviving DDs. Good hits. Well done. Now we're talking. A few bulkheads. The ship's flooding. I am, however, pretty rapidly running out of ships. That's quite concerning. Uh, join... Join... Whose group is this? The Macon? Group 3. I am really running out of ships. Alright. I sent these guys off way too far. Devonshire is flooding... The Hyman, without the use of a smokescreen, is never going to be able to get into range. Let's not risk it. Let's lob some HE shells over to that heavy cruiser and be done with it. I'm just trying to neutralize as many guns as I can at this point. But also, uh, at least mitigate the threat of further torpedo attacks. Wow, did that all just... Not land. Wow. I had expected a bit more. Truth be told, I think I'm going to lose this fight. I don't really see myself winning this one. <clears throat> Especially with those big guns, and especially the large amount of guns on the battleships, my cruisers, heavy or light, don't really seem to stand up to them very well. Panchans? 28% only. Okay. Look at that. HE just doesn't do anything. Curious. Okay, new target, glorious. And we're going to try and get into range of the Barham. And I mean, I know I'm already in range. But I want to get into closer range. And in the meanwhile, I want to take out the 13-inch guns on the glorious. Uh, DDs. Oof. If they had given me 6.1 kilometer in, or 6.1 kilometer range torpedoes, this would have been a very different battle. Unfortunately, that is not what I got. <coughs> I still have three healthy ships here. Colorado, Chester, Minneapolis. But they're just too far away from the battle at this point. How fast can you go? 24, 22, 24. Increase speed to 22. I'm completely mismanaging the situation here. Come on, if we can put the Glorious on fire again all over the ship, then she might sink. That's the plan right now. Just overwhelm the damage control parties and burn that thing down. 
I might even subject the barum to the same treatment. I'm barely setting any new fires, though. Wow, how are you guys still alive? And meanwhile, the AI is trying to sink the Pueblo. Which is bad news for the Pueblo, because she does have some armor, but not that much of it. She's trying to return fire versus Glorious. As she's part of the battleship group. There goes one of the DDs. Fire set, fire set. We already have eight fires currently. Yeah, I went way, way, way too far out of range with those ships. Big mistake. <clears throat> I'm going to be paying the price for it as well. More fires. There's six of them now. Pen chance is going up to about 21. Well, they're taking hold, but... Yes, a bit more. That's the Hyman. That's the DD. Oh, I almost had her. The Glorious. There were so many fires going on that ship. Panchance currently 18% only. That's pretty bad. I want you guys to go for the heavies. Don't worry about the battleships just yet. Oh, Pueblo's going down. <laughs> We're setting some fires here and there, also with the secondaries. I think this ship might slowly but steadily get oversaturated. Parts of the ship which have been severely damaged just don't take any more damage. There's nothing more to burn on this ship. Panchans, 18%. But it's going up pretty quick. Chance here, 32%. Switch to auto. Give me a couple of HE, or AP hits and we shall get rid of this battle cruiser. There we go. She's now also flooding. In 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 compartments. Oh, good work, battleships. Lovely. That's what I want to see. If I can do the same thing to the Barum, I can quickly get rid of her. You know, all my DDs are dead. The Antrim has sunk. Thank you, heavy cruisers. Well done. Next is the Kent. Slow these ships down a bit. Folks, fire on the Kent. Start heading to port. Holy crap, the Barham took a beating. These things cannot damage control very well. They got a lot of guns, but their damage control is just shit. I think the Barham will flood. Switch fire to the Bulwark. Yes, 8%, 6%, 4%, 2%, 0.4. 4. She's dead. Good work. We might survive this fight yet. Panchans? Hello? <coughs> 21, okay. In the meanwhile, the Pueblo is being held together by duct tape and a prayer. There's not much more consisting of this ship, I guess. Oh, and water. Look at that! She took another 634 and 230 and she's still here. I don't know how, but I'm not going to question it. There goes the Kent. Good work, guys. Good work. Next heavy cruiser is the Blake. Focus fire. Get rid of that ship. The Bulwark looks like, again, as her sister ships, has a big problem with staying afloat. 
She is fighting it. And she's winning it as well. She might not sink. Light cruiser, time to go in for a torpedo attack. Detroit. Set a smoke screen. Where are your torpedo tubes? Port and starboard. That works for me. Hold off. Do not fire. Because the Blake will probably flood. Uh, shift, right click. Torpedoes allowed. Ooh. That looked pretty painful. Rudder damaged, engine damaged, ships flooding, ships on fire. Detroit, send out torpedoes against the Hawk. Please, before you die. Uh, that is... I'm not even sure whose group that is. Are these solo ships? The Savannah. Oh, here's the Savannah. Oh dear. Savannah, a hard turn to port. Detroit is down. Here come the Maryland and the Pennsylvania. They're still trying to f finish off the bulwark, but the bulwark seems to be leaving the battle. In that case, I'm going to wrap up with these heavies. Hopefully. Torpedoes are away. Here they are. And these are fast torpedoes. Speed, 42 knots, but the cruiser sees them coming and turns to starboard. We're not going to rely on those torpedoes too much. Savannah's dead. They got Devonshire, Hawk, and Blake. Uh-oh. Pennsylvania! No! She too, like the other battleship, has minimum bulkheads. Oof. I don't like that. <clears throat> that flooding could kill me. There goes the Pueblo, finally. Damn, that thing could take a beating and a half. Uh, where are the other ships? Colorado is almost dead, but the Chester and the Minneapolis are alright. Blake should be going down fast due to a withering barrage from both the secondaries and the primaries from, well, everything that I have around here. <clears throat> Casemates destroyed, main tower destroyed, or damaged, rather. Blake should be dead any minute now. I think the Macon can avoid that torpedo. Come on. We still have more to sink. How many shells do I have left? Plenty. Loads. I guess the battleship is... No, it's not running away. She's still here. Good hit. Uh-oh. Macon's flooding. And with maximum bulkheads, she might control that. But I'm not sure if the rest of the damage won't do her in before she controls the flooding. <clears throat> Devonshire should be going down fast, and then the Hawks right after that. Oh crap, there's another torpedo. That's something that the Macon cannot avoid. Not with that much water in her bow. She's pretty much dead. Chester and Minneapolis. You guys are perfectly healthy. Battleship, start heading starboard. Yeah, she just took a torpedo hit. I'm surprised that didn't outright kill her, that torpedo hit. Devonshire is dead, but so is the Macon. Hawk is dead. All right. Last one standing. Bulwark. All ships that are still combat capable, set a course for the bulwark and engage. I have one, two, three, four, five ships left. Sorry, six ships. They're not all in excellent fighting condition, but at least they're still shooting. And as long as I can keep doing damage against the bulwark, I might still sink it. Oh, 
Especially if I get flooding hits. That'd be perfect. So far, it's... Oh, that was a lot of fires that were suddenly set. I haven't dictated anyone to start firing HE, so the game might have decided that all by itself. I'm very happy that the Pennsylvania is still with us. That's a couple of really powerful guns. And she was able to fight off the flooding, but not pump out that bow compartment. Damn it, Minneapolis took a bit of a beating here. 237 damage thanks to one hit. Structural integrity down to 39%. Fires are taking hold. Almost all parts of the ship. There we go, the bottom has been controlled. This is not a happy warship. <clears throat> credit where credit is due. At least she's not uh, she's not fleeing the battle. I've seen that happen so many times where the AI just goes, "Yep, I'm out of here." And this at time at least they don't do that. She's once again gained control of the fires. Uh, Maryland turns starboard a bit. I still have the Chester with her torpedoes. Oh, she's out of 7-inch ammo. Oh, crap. The other ships still have a decent supply left. At this point, I'm kind of expecting to see floodings. There. There. Flooding. Floatability is going down, and it was already weakened. More flooding. I guess we're getting waterline slash below waterline hits now. 40%, 35, 30. She's rapidly taken on water now. 16. 10, 7, 5, 3, and she's gone. The Americans win the fight. Damn, that was a good fight. Lots of casualties on both sides, but the Americans came out with more ships afloat than the British, as the British lost all their ships. Hope you enjoyed that fight. Let me know what your opinion is down below in the comments. If you have any good ideas, then by all means, leave those down below in the comments as well. Um, I'm always up for trying things and uh, figuring out what sort of scenarios work. Keep in mind, I can only design one class of ship, and there are no aircraft carriers in the game. I've had people ask me, hey, can you do the Battle of Midway? Uh, no, I cannot, because I don't have any aircraft carriers. And I'm not sure if they're adding those to the game. I really don't know. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that fight, and I shall see you guys soon for more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts.